Say thank you to everybody who's here. Thank you for everyone who came out on their Saturday morning to view the film. Um, thank you for Trace Amounts and the actual bus tour being here. As you may know, Eric and the filmmakers are here and they will be um, discussing after the film some of your questions and um, just doing a very brief um, Q&A after the film. HFR is a gene, so there's a protein that codes the gene. That This gene <coughs> is kind of the starting point to the whole methylation and transulfuration pathways. So it goes through a process starting at the MTHFR and there's two common, I think 98% of children with autism have one or two of these alleles. They're single nucleotide polymorphisms. It's a mutation, 677 allele or 1298. So 98% of children in the study I saw um, had one or two of those, those mutations. And with that mutation, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not working. It means it's probably you know, slowed down to some degree or could manifest into something much bigger upon some of these exposures. So this, these two pathways are the direct result of how much glutathione you can produce in your body. Glutathione is your, basically your primary protection against mercury exposures. And if, you know, we've seen children with autism have much lower levels of glutathione, so they can't excrete mercury like typical children. And this MTHFR, these SNPs in the MTHFR and the CBS enzyme, uh, the CBS enzyme is kind of on the other, it's responsible for um, basically t converting homocysteine down the line to glutathione. So that one, there's some uh, mutations in, in, in those as well that are really more com much more common in children with autism. So these play a big factor because these are the exact pathways that are responsible for producing glutathione, cysteine, methionine, all these sulfur-based proteins that you need to be able to excrete it. So not only, you know, like with smoking and lung cancer, we know smoking causes lung cancer, but we don't know why it causes it in some and not in others. Mm -hmm. With this one, we know exactly why. We know who the susceptible ones are, and those are the ones that can excrete mercury the least. And now we're giving it to babies who can't excrete it at all. Mm -hmm. So giving it to a 10 pound baby who is producing bile, who's sweating, urinating, whatever, is totally different than giving it to a developing fetus where we've seen not only in studies, but also in past tragedies, Minamata Bay in Japan, that the developing fetus will protect that mother from the mercury by absorbing that mercury because it has a high affinity for the developing fetus. Mm -hmm. And not only will it absorb it, it's got zero ability to, to excrete. So it's far worse than giving it to a, uh, a growing baby. Another thing is you, you can call Congress, you can call your own congressperson and say, I, I'm aware of this. Done that. Yeah, I, done that. You ever get all of your friends to should tell everybody. Call, should we call Posey's office? I was saying you, and then that was, just, I was, yes, and then call Posey's. I mean, Posey's on it. He's on it. I, I don't know. But, you, but as, you know, I think. The one thing I don't understand is whenever I call Posey's. The younger generation is the one that's the ones that are going to really make the change here. Because we've interacted with a lot of the, the, the older people seem to be set in their mind, oh, I was exposed to this, I wasn't hurt. And we need to educate the younger generations, the college students, the ones who are going to be coming up and having children soon, because they're the ones that are in the immediate, um, you know, some have already been affected, but these are the ones who are in what I call clear and present danger moving forward. They need to be aware of this. And not only do they need to be aware of this, they're the ones that are going to most likely drive the change because I don't think they're going to tolerate it. The younger generations know the importance of our children. They're not going to tolerate it. I don't really have a, a question. I, I just wanted to thank you for this amazing film. And it made me cry. It enraged me. Uh, it continued my skepticism of government and the agencies that, as you alluded to, we should be able to rely upon that we cannot. And I wanted to mention this rule that just come down. Although in the state we are not, uh, although there is a mandate for vaccines, we can obtain exemptions. And I have two young children that are four and seven that have never been vaccinated. And I really thank my wife for enlightening me and you know, bringing this subject to, to attention to me. And it's something I'm highly motivated to, to deal with. Uh, when I see your film, it makes me think that, you know, this is so well done that there are other related subjects yeah. that could be done by someone as skillful as, as yourself and, and doing other films that would also enlighten people. And I can't wait to get a hold of this to be able to show it to people that I think are in authority that would be moved by this to make better decisions than have been made in the past. But the current ruling is something that I'm really working to undo in Oakland County in particular where I live. Um, I'm required to go to 
the public health department, make an appointment, and I was informed I have to bring my children that are four and seven Home years County old. Home County too. Oh, Home County also? Yeah. No. Oh, wait. Yeah. We don't have school systems are implementing that. I have a son who has two children, and he had to just sit down, he and his wife, and sign something, which he signed under duress. Yeah. Well, well there's, a, there's a waiver that you obtain that way rather than in the conventional way that we used to get waivers. And you are only required to get a waiver if you have a child entering kindergarten or entering the seventh grade. Or change a school district. Or change a school district. <laughs> Pediatricians don't know anything about the negative effect. They literally don't. They haven't been trained in vaccines. They just know, they just need to know what vaccine and when do I give it, and that's it. They literally do not know anything about mercury. They don't know anything about aluminum. They know nothing and it's very scary. Very scary out there that they're on the front lines giving these vaccines. Every day I get on Google, twice a day, and I type in uh, vaccination news. And you hear all kinds of things, a lot of things that have been talked about, about legislation in New Jersey and that. And I really feel that these legislatures are not going to do anything until people from out of state write and say, hey, you know what? We're not going to vacation in your state. We're not going to spend money in your state. And money talks. And I think if they start getting enough letters and it catches on, it's going to mean something, whether it's religious exemption, whatever. Because let's face it, all they care about is, is the money.